you can see. I have started recording Flimsy. I can't believe it's not Kirk and Lower. Can't believe it's not, it's not Millhouse Parent. Yes. Millhouse Mom. Alright, let's get on with this. Let us. A brief history of casting by Beyonce Jones and Relly Coland. For thousands of what your world would refer to as years, the salt circle was guarded and the age-old tale of the thousand years enshrouded by the salt circle, the land of Springfields was plagued by chaos and darkness. Fearing the encroaching threats of terrorism and extremism, a solution was devised that would bring a millennium of safety and wonder to the realm. At the first corner of the salt circle stood Barry, the Vale of Catmose, the wise and vigilant Vale of Catmose, donned in a regal purple suit. Barry was not just any feline, she was the head of counter-terrorism and extremism in the land schools. A sharp wit, keen senses, made him the guardian of knowledge and protector of innocent minds. In the second corner resided the enigmatic human automated Munch Munch, affectionately known as Ham, a remarkable robot defense pig with mechanical precision and an ironclad resolve. Ham patrolled the boundaries, thwarting any threat with calculated efficiency. The third corner found its defender in the form of Commander Darren Spider, an unconventional Roman centurion spider, adorned with cheek plumes and a spirit of unwavering courage. Darren held the line against darkness, weaving a web of strength and honor. As for the fourth corner, it was the home of the queer folk mice queer, in the old-fashioned sense, a troop of medieval mice who were truly unusual in every sense of the word. Under the rule of their king, Kurt Vonnegut, perched on a tiny throne, these mice embraced their uniqueness, becoming a symbol of unity and diversity. Above the skies were guarded by Jessica Owls and Natalie Balloon Manticore, fierce and graceful sentinels of the earth. Their watchful eyes and majestic flight ensured that no threat could emerge from above to disturb the peace below. Beneath the waves, Nile Balloon Manticore, a mermaid chef of unparalleled culinary skill, kept the seas safe and serene. With a trident in hand and a heart full of courage, Nile ensured that the waters remained a sanctuary for all. Inside the circle, a duo of brothers Flimsy Rosewater and Lawrence Nightingale, dedicated to both protection and preservation. They safeguard the circle with unyielding determination while documenting the beauty of Springfield's backwaters and doors. Among the circle's unique inhabitants was Pants Humbly, half lobster, half stand up comedian, who brought laughter to even the darkest hours. And let's not forget Beef Wellington, a pub lunch and Cronality aficionado who added a touch of warmth and pureness to the heart of the circle. For a thousand years, this collective of defenders and dreamers upheld the magic of the salt circle, ensuring safety, diversity, and the celebration of the extraordinary. And then, the circle broke. The offenses of robots sent by an unknown enemy caused chaos. Jessica Owls, dead. Beef Wellington, dead, the circle was stashed, and the brothers were forced to exile and enter the harsh cold of the Wee Wee Principality and the flagship series. Months of traveling and listening to tales of how Maud Flanders stood in the background of whatever scene she was stood in the background of that particular day, and more casualties occurred. Stafford Spider squished, arm exploded it. it, it. Balloon Manticores on holiday. And this is where we find our Ouija Bo offspring on this day. Still 
traveling alongside the Brothers O'Leary on their quest to stop Christoph Penderecki, or whoever it is, regrouping, rebuilding, and ready to continue discussing the adventures of Springfield's backwaters and doors. <laughs> Welcome to our magical world. We are the mice. Vampires roam, mystical cures abound. A momentous place, place has taken place. Jacques Derrida, the renowned philosopher, stands before enigmatic figure of James Woods, a sorcerer of great repute. You have saved my son from a vampire curse. I cannot express my gratitude. Ah, Monsieur Derrida, it was a complex trade indeed. Your son is free, but the balance must be restored. A life, after all, is a life. So it is the way with magic. I understand the price, Mr. Woods. My life for my sons, it is only fitting. Look how his eyes, look how his eyes have got so wide, realising the cost of his son's salvation. I, I think the weight, the weight of his decisions resting very heavily on his shoulders. Also worse, his carry. And also, where okay. this, where's the, the, that laughter of children coming from? <laughs> Jock, be careful. Oh my goodness, it, before our very eyes, a magical transformation is happening. Look at those embers, they're twinkling, flimsy. What is that enchanting light? And where? Where is Jacques, the elderly philosopher? He, all I can see is a tiny, vibrant baby cooing and babbling. Deconstruct. Reconstruct. Leave a space I for feel, baby noises. I feel light bathing us. I'm As holding the stamp, child. Stamp is now bathed. Ho ho ho. Oh baby Derrida, I will I will pass you over to these youngsters who will take care of you with utmost care. But no, flimsy nightshade. That the philosopher's essence remains unchanged, albeit in a different form. Your wisdom will live on, little one, even as you begin your new journey, Kuti Kuti Ku. <laughs> I am astonished, Flimsy. What's happened? It's it's shock, but different. In baby form. He's still sp he's still the same philosopher, but just in a much smaller package. Tee hee. Okay. Why? Why, James Woods? He froze them for a long time. <coughs> oh, baby Derrida is exploring his toys using non-categorical languages, gestures, expressions, and even unconventional communication to act with James Woods. Tee hee hee. I love this little baby wing. Why? 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 I inquisitive, even in this new form I see, Jock. What a magical exchange. Derrida is constantly questioning things. No proclivity for critical thinking. He is embracing the ambiguity and fluidity of his new existence, and he's... Shit. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. I have frozen. Frozen too. The room fills with an aura. Look at that aura. What do you think, oh. Brendan and Nathan? Not interested. No, this Don't is not our show. We're busy. We're planning our season 10. Right in season 10. Get out of here. Take your goddamn baby. So then a big a big bulky cow starts working at the... Listening to our stories. Oh, All right, we'll cows. carry on over here. Spoilers. Um, look at him deftly exploring multiple interpretations of the same object. It seems as if he's transcending the boundaries of fixed meaning. Riding a hamster. Oh. Well, it's a marvellous, isn't it? But anyway, let's do a song. Um what? Do you want to see the name or the attribute? Attribute. Luan and Kirk Van Houten. Italian and Greek descent. Luan and Kirk Van Houten. Birthday is December 1. Luan and Kirk Van Houten. Born without eyebrows. Kirk and Luan Van Houten. Actually cousins. Kirk and Luan Van Houten. Pyro. Kirk and Luan Van Houten. Gyro. Kirk and Luan Van Houten. A jar of love. The realm of Heck is devoid of inhabitants. All the malevolent entities have assembled in this place. Presently we go by the title of Antiquarians L. M. Nightingale and F. Rosewater, currently being accommodated by delightful mice in the even we are republic. Lawrence M. Nightingale. Selfish allergy, bloodless, hates cabbage, Bigfoot's cousin, Red Bull winner, Reese's Pieces and Warhead's access, 
Freddy's collaboration. And I'm Flimsy Rosewater, ribbon lover. I pursue eternal jellyfish, tasting words, hearing colours, mouse's village, joy after eons of XNE demons. Once Dusty Tomlick is in Laylee's hometown town hall, has to archive Simpsons files haphazardly, documenting Springfield's backwaters and adults. Number 20. Grateful to our kin for rescuing WWP from Zanakis. We are the experts. Lawrence. No circle this fine morning, nor our four angels, R.I.P. Darren Spider and Ham. Question mark. Manticore's on holiday. What cast cast connections do we have from our guests today, Luan and Kirk Van Houten, Millhouse parent? Yeah, well, this this is more similar to, this is sort of a new era of casting. So this is very Nedna. But the difference in Nedna, we focused only on when they were in the relationship. And I guess they, they Ned and, and Edna had other bits before that of some importance, whereas these two have been together from the start and the joke came when they were not together. Yes, and they just got status quo, which is interesting. They're one of the only times that I can think that they went back on something that they changed. Like, they didn't unhave the octuplets and Maud didn't return to the life. Stop saying her name. Sorry. But yeah, they went the other way. They were like, let's, let's break them up. And then after a while, oh, let's just put them back together. So how about Cast Cast Connections Death? Death of a marriage. Let's, let's Gla go for that. Glasses. Yes. Twofold. School. No. But they do visit a, a good amount. I yeah. Yes, they do. Uncool. Yes. I mean the it's whole specifically the, Kirk. Specifically Kirk. Mobbers. Yes. yes. Definitively. Yes. They are both front and centre mobbers. Bringing back characters to annoy graining. No. Bringing back characters to pay Roswell. Yes, but not to annoy Graining, to my knowledge. Love connections. There is one, Stu. Stu is the only one I can think of, but we may have seen more. True, but I'd likely. say that these, these two characters are defined by the love connections through this entire story, even though, yes, we don't necessarily have connections to other cast cast members yet. Exactly. Luan and Ned, how about that as a pairing? Ooh. Slightly less interesting than what they did with Nedna. Tapped exactly. out and Bongo. Yes, and yes. Squirrel Luan. I don't know. In fact, I don't know about Bongo. I've never checked for a Kirk Luan Bongo experience. Celebrity voice. Maggie Roswell. Hank Azaria. Married but to Selma. This is his only one. This is Roswell's only one where her husband isn't Harry Shearer. What other characters does she play? <laughs> Mod Fonders. Mod Fonders, yeah. Her Mod. husband is, uh, is uh, Harry Shearer. Helen Lovejoy. Harry Shearer. End of list. Miss Hoover, <laughs> but she's not married. Uh, multiple jobs? Uh, we I don't know. Kirk definitely, but Luan, is, I don't think it's ever said what Luan does. But Kirk has the peanut factory, and then he has unemployment. Yes, and he also, I remember there's one where he puts flyers under people's windshields. Poverty. Yes, abject. Again, like it's, it, the Simpsons seem to think it's funnier to have the man suffer. Female poverty is no, no laughing matter. No, FP. Springfield celebrity. No, but Luan Dick is Springfield celebrity. Pyro Gyro. Yes, two. Moving in with the Simpsons. Kirk living there would be. That's the season 37 romp. Kirk's living in the garden, right? In, in, the, in the garage first and then the garden. In the Simpsons house. That's the that's how I would write it. I would have Kirk grudgingly allowed to stay in the in the in the garage and then moved out into the treehouse and then eventually just out into the garden. Um, incompetent. Uh, yes. The judge said he was. I was the most pathetic man he'd ever seen in court. And surnameless. Yes. Their name is is Van Houten. I don't Van know. I, I don't know. I just like him. What appeals to you about Kirk and Luan Van Houten? The biggie. Is the design, specifically Luan, I don't know why, but the design to me is super fun. And there's a lot of good angles. Yes. One of best. It sort of works funnier on a woman. You've got Kirk and Milhouse who look exactly the same, but the Luan design seems funnier to me. And uh, But Kirk as a character is by far one of the funniest, especially this sort of Milhouse, Ralph, Mo, Willie, Kirk, I would say. They, um, maybe Chalmers, are the are the ones that kind of remain funny even through the, the weaker seasons. And they're all sort of interchangeable, like Mole, Mole Man, Kirk, Barney. There's a lot of characters you can just gill. There's a lot of pathetic people waiting for something bad to happen to them. Oh, and we got a lot of bad stuff that can happen to you, Springfielders. I would, 
I would go as far to say, even though we've done almost 100 episodes of the Mordcast, that Luan is probably Maggie Roswell's, um, our cousins. Probably her most developed character. Shut your mouth. What? Shut your mouth. Exactly. You heard me. Luan is Roswell's most developed. In what way is that? In what way? I think she just has more traits than uh, Helen and Maud. She has more sort of independent personality outside of being in a family. What rank would you put her A to G? I would put Kirk, I think I'd put Kirk C and Luan D. No, maybe Kirk B. Kirk B, Luan C. Kirk B? Yes. Consider Kirk. Millhouse down. I'd put alongside, like, Willie. Maybe. Let's see, let's see who's in our B. But worse people like Skinner and, and Krusty and Moe. They're all B. So Moe and Kirk Van Outen and Krusty and Kirk Van Outen, same level? The more it went on, the more they used Kirk a lot. There's like, I can think of, there's at least like two Kirk episodes, possibly three now. Kirk-centric. Yes, Kirk-centric episodes, which are, yes, he is. you know, whereas we've got in our C list, we have like Stu and Doris. I would say oh. that he has more going on than them. May have to retcon oh. some of these lists later. Let's have a look at some of their biography. Luan, apparently Greek and Italian descent, her mother Sophie, Remains in Italy with Luan's half-brother Bastardo. You tell me if Bastard. that's true or false. I think it might be true. Bastardo Van Outen, but it wouldn't be. I think it's Mussolini, isn't it? Born in Never Shelby. Did. Yeah, her, 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 apparently her maiden name was Mussolini. Bastardo Mussolini. Luan was born in Shelbyville, a town founded on the principle of freedom to marry one's cousin, which she did. Her cousin. Her cousin. Her cousin. Her cousin. Her cousin. Her cousin. I think the cousin thing's implied. But I'll let you come back to it later, I guess. Um, most of the story is around them uh, arguing and then getting separated and then her going off and having her first with the gladiators and then them getting back together again. Spoilers. She lives next door to Elizabeth Hoover. Does she? I did not know. That. Oh, yes, she does, because they both date Apu. Uh, voiced by Maggie Roswell. Therefore, did not appear oh. as a speaking character. Shut up, shut your mouth. From, you seasons, know from seasons 11 to 14. Apparently, Raggy Roswell was forced to leave the show after a pay increase dispute and then came back again in a season 15 episode. Millhouse doesn't live here anymore. Now, that is a good fact to have. So she left the show. Oh, shut up. Shut your mouth. Uh, so they liken um, them to Akbar and Jeff, the, the two kind of non binary Egyptians in Life in Hell. Oh, of I think course. I it, think it's a bit of a stretch. That is quite a stretch um, um it is worth noting that there is a, a lot i'd say out of all the kaskaski people we've done probably other than ned and edna this has the most chopped content because there is, yes this is just focusing on kirk and loan together but they could both easily have and will uh millhouse has a forked tongue because his parents are cousins and they got married disagree um they got divorced after an argument at a dinner party agree as a child, she went to camp with um, Marge, Patty, Selma, Lovejoy, and Cookie Kwan. She did, and not Maud, strangely. Not Maud. She dated Apu, as you've said, but she also got it on with the sea captain, Otto Disco Stew, and possibly Dr. Hibbert while he was still married to Kirk. Wonderful. This bizarre thing happened at um, during Tapped Out, which is Squirrel Luan. Yeah. There's also Squirrel Kirk. Um, they were just both in a... They were the costumes in an adult Halloween party. That's as far as that goes. Interesting. Kirk was in the army and graduated from Goodyear College and worked at his father's cracker factory, Southern Cracker. He was, however, <laughs> um, fired from the factory. I don't remember saying good luck. <laughs> well, that, that didn't make it in. No. Um, which is unfortunate. He is of Dutch and Danish descent, but favours the former and bickers with his brother Norbert. Norbert Van Houten. He does. Norbert being the least Van Houten-y character you could see. I think he, he, he sort of he pops up with them in one of these clips. Really? Have a look at him. Oh, yeah, he's the Indiana Jones character. Oh, yes, that is. That. Kirk's brother, apparently. Uh, Kirk made a cassette demo tape called Can I Borrow a Feeling? And uh, he slept in a race car. Oh, a bed and his girlfriend who appears in the clip of Stella Star Stella Starby, a chain smoking alcoholic who eventually stole his car. Yes, I um I don't agree with the surname though. That implies that she's Dolph's mother. Right. And we don't think that's true. I don't think so. At one point during the St. Patrick's Day parade, after a poo urged everyone to get naked, uh, he attempted to do so 
the party was just about to get started. That sounds very Kirk. They're both, and this comes up, this is why I left a few things in clip one that we'll come to in a minute, but um, they're both rash and willing to sort of live on the edge. And not That's appearing both. to be very conservative on the surface. Kirk had a job standing on the curb holding a sign directing people to condo development and worked as a scarecrow projecting a soybean crop, which resulted in his eye being gouged out by a crow. Yes. This is what I mean about later Kirk. These are all things that happened to Kirk when they, uh, I think they clocked that it was funnier to happen to Kirk than like an old man, like Mole Man. So they sort of replaced the Does Mole Man. Did he get his eye back? Presumably. He definitely doesn't have an eye patch throughout. So he either just goes on pretending or he gets a functioning eye back. He wants his Arrested. right arm cut off by Snake? Yes, we've seen that. That was in that, um, when they buy, when the Flanders buy the murder house. Tree of Horror? No, when they buy the murder house and move in. And then um, Homer and Snake crash into the front of the house and destroy it, if you remember. Snake is trying to get the car back off Homer and Kirk has his arm up and says, I ordered a large sandwich and it just sl slices his arm off. But the arm comes back. Yes, and his eye. The one van out and leaves her husband, Kirk, alone in the house. Marge Simpson knocks on the door of Kirk's house. Marge is invited to his house. They began to have an affair in the couch and end up falling in love. Kirk makes out with Marge in the couch. <laughs> the in next the morning, this is on one of the Simpsons wikis, and it's a very long explanation of, of in, in, in incredibly simple and incorrect English about an affair between Kirk and Marge. Kirk has no choice but to accept. How many times answers Kirk and Marge, like in every single sentence? <laughs> yeah. That's chatbot. Every... Chatbot, I'm calling you. I see what you've done. If it wasn't racy, it would be chatbot. But no, there is an episode, it, it got cut out of this, actually, because this originally was like 14 minutes long. There's a whole thing where Melos tries to split them back up because he prefers the attention, and he does it by leaving Marge's bra on the one's bed. <laughs> there you go. And then... The one takes it round to and, and says, uh, your wife is having an affair with my husband. And Homer says, and you are. Oh, dear. But anyway, here's a here's a, here's a short letter from Drake. I don't know if you've been watching the news. Um, it's for you, baby Derrida. <coughs> Would you no, you can't. Just stop. He's turning. He's, he's put the letter in his mouth. Right, right. We construct as he construct. Dear Professor Derrida and Garnigots, it's me, Drake, again. Grateful for your impact on surreal journey and we are principality of the mind. Landscape of Akajo. Philosophy, ambiguity, deconstruction. I have brought Tupac's magic ring and a real poet. I'm on top of the world. Love Drake. Um, I don't That's know where good. Vonnegut's gone. And now, now um, there is a baby. Mice. They've gone to a spa centre for the day uh, with her anyway, pants. Let's do some content. Let's. Let us. There's the great tune of um, Our House is a Very. Is that from the show? Or is that just your, your, your just choice? No, this was from the show. This was like a little... This montage summed up everything perfectly, so I put it at the beginning. Melos is falling past clouds where his mum is on the arm of American Gladiator. Mom is dancing with Disco Stewart. Dad is being an ice cream hog. Dad, comedic suicide fail. Another nice. one. Another one. Another one? And a, and a fun... Um, no funeral. Mom and dad catch him and smile. Yes, all I had to say about that was, look, it's Disco Stewart. It is, but it does sum up the entirety of what we're going to be doing in that like 30 seconds. They're together, they split up, they date, they reunite. Kirk only dates once and it goes very poorly. <laughs> My mixtape. No, no, you cannot borrow a feeling. <laughs> I feel like changing wicks. Part yeah. one, it's dignity, our house. Millhouse mum is out of bed <laughs> and full of beans. Mil mum says, Millhouse is out of bed and full of beans, it's a miracle. Shuts the door, but we can clearly see it's Bart Simpson's head there. Yeah, that's the first time I let this in because it's the first time you see them together, I believe, interacting, and they're both happy that Millhouse Mil has been sad, and now it's Bart's fault, but now they're just fighting it out in the room. But um, Kirk and Luan don't particularly like Bart, especially Luan, so um, they don't mind that Millhouse is wailing on Bart. They just like that he's, you know, he's up and about. I'm full of beans. So they see what they want to see, and the rash is what I took from this initial, I can't think of a French word. Kirk, so, Kirk pulls liquor from bag and says, whispers, tonight we'll push the twin beds together, Luan. We see the shadow of Kirk and Luan moving together, it smoothly through the window in shadow, as a happy millhouse sits alone in an empty tent in the garden. Yeah, that one's from the one where Grandpa and Homer make like the love tonic. So all the couples in Springfield get into this love tonic. Including, but, um, um, including our cousin's favourites? No, 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 no. 
Oh no. You shut your mouth. Exactly. You don't bring her into this. Um but yeah, they they set off basically the same. They have like five or six what I refer to as A-list couples, like the Flanders, the Hoovers. No, the Flanders, the Wiggums, the Hibberts. Well the Flanders are involved. Yeah, just they're just in general in the show. These are all like the A-list couples, the Love Joys. You know, anybody who's basically a nuclear family, I would consider like and by the like by thirty two years in they've all gone off on their own little trajectories like Ned and Maud. I'll pressing to know. Lost you there for a, for a good chunk of time after you said Ned and Maud. Oh, goody. Yeah, Ned and Maud, all of the journeys for the couples don't stay. Like, they don't all just stay, like, background couples. Something kind of happens to... They set up different traits for each relationship. And Kirk and Luan's is that they're sort of impulsive. The Lovejoys didn't really do anything, did they? No, they go into, like, later on, they go into sort of the marriage troubles and the sort of, like, the thing about Lovejoy and his trains... Preferring the trains over Helen, that kind of stuff. Right. So they sort of, I think basically once Kirk and Luan are back together and sort of settle, they start messing around with Tim and Helen. What about um, the the Hibberts? Hibberts get nothing. It's getting nothing. And as as do not the other one I mentioned, the Wiggums, really. Um, so, so it's $3 a pill. We hear you've become a star. We decided we better start living in the fast lane, says Kirk, as he opens a giant TV box. And Nella says, how are you paying for all this? The one is wearing a jacuzzi suit and surrounded by boxes that say fragile. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm wearing a jacuzzi suit, she says. Yes, Luan is also probably Roswell's most expressive character in terms of vocal. Like, she does the most shouting and sort of, like, I don't know, she has the most, like, emotional range, I would say. Maud's, we don't hear Maud's voice. Shut your mouth. Stop talking about her. We told you this last time. No. Uh, yeah, you sort of, I don't know, Luan seems a lot more emotional vocally. Uh, I just left this in because it shows how rash they are. And, like, it makes sense that everything just crumbled around them. I can't hear, it's Millhouse who's like, what if I don't become a star? Like, what are you going to do with all story? this stuff? What was Millhouse's stardom? It's when he becomes Fallout Boy for Radio oh, right. and, um, The, the rock yeah, and roll band just... Fallout Boy, is that based on Millhouse's character? Yes. But also in, Bart's character. Is. Yes, but also just the character of Fallout Boy from The Simpsons. Fancy smiles next to Kirk and Luan. <laughs> Concerned Kirk says, if they just find M Milhouse, will they just find him or will they find him and kill him? Clancy mumbles, excuse me, you did not answer me. You just trailed off. Is this the one where he says, yes, I kind of did? Yeah, I left. I just left this in because it, it, it was funny. I had it and it was funny. It's an example of them being united in the concern over Milhouse. But I do like that Kirk's very... I don't know, it's just the matter-of-fact way he says, excuse me, excuse me, you didn't answer me, you just trailed off, is uh, yes, funny. And they do Kirk sort of angry, which you point out in the next sentence, actually. Angry yeah, Kirk, Kirk, man. Yeah. I hate those I Shelbyville trust. jerks. Oh, honey, I was born in Shelby Shelbyville, Luan. Angrier, and it tears me up inside, says Kirk. Yeah, that's just setting a little speed that everything is not okay. But I'll, I'd say all the clips we've just looked at, Establish that things are not okay in the Van Outen household. I can't hear you. I'm wearing a jacuzzi suit. But yeah, it's, things so the, are. Uh, the Simpsons, you would see that and you would see it contrasted with a little bit more thought, right? So if Marge had bought a jacuzzi suit, like a minute later, she'd probably be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have bought this jacuzzi suit. But they would just go with it until the train crashes off the, the mountain yeah and they have no qualms using millhouse for his stardom to buy things that they want for themselves selfish impulsive short-tempered <laughs> yes i think you'll like this one nathan and brendan how you in your, in your modcast you said that ned and Shut Maud were a mirror <laughs> a mirror for uh the simpsons so i heard them though but they're like the worst version they're showing that, like, oh yeah, Marge and Homer are pretty good, actually, in comparison. On, on the surface, they don't appear to be that ridiculous, right? It's like, but as you get to know them, nothing is just, just nothing is good at all right. The, everything is just slightly off in a way that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, Mo Luan started off way more Mordy. Shut your and mouth. Became, became not. Part two. Cry for you. The night there at the Simpsons' house, Bart takes the coats. Sorry we are late, but Luann had to put on her face, says Kirk cheerfully. She is less so. She doesn't want anyone to know she's got no eyebrows, and then she turns to, to show a sloppy joke in which her eyebrows are all over her face. And he says, what, you don't? <laughs> uh, this is confusing. She, so she doesn't have eyebrows, and she chooses to apply eyebrows that are the same as 
her son and husband. Here, I also spent some time last night doing a picture of what she would look like without eyebrows and glasses. If she wanted to truly break away from the Van Outens when she broke up with Kirk, this is what she may have looked like. Oh, that's pretty good. Yes. So um, That would have been cool if she if they'd have gone in that direction. And maybe given yes. her a little, a little hat. Maybe, um, yes. Maybe yes. Maybe yes. Yeah, this is, we're, we're going into what is definitive one of the best Simpsons scenes. And you guys over there have already been here. Jay, <laughs> Now it's our turn. Eating dinner, Luan says, you should have seen how Kirk dealt with his high school boys. We've seen, we've already covered this clip already, haven't we? Yes, I've just, just seconds ago said that to you. <laughs> maybe, maybe under 20 seconds ago. <laughs> You've got to speak up, speak clearly, boy. Exactly. It's that good. You, you should have seen how Kirk dealt with the high school boys who threw eggs to Tower Bonneville. She chugs down the wine. Her says Kirk. You should have asked them to hurl some bacon. Maybe I could have had a decent breakfast for once. This is, I know what we do laugh out loud sometimes at clips, but I would say that this got three or four proper laugh out loud moments. Yeah, Kirk and Luan together, uh, bickering. Her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun out, yeah, they're both too emotionally charged to be together. And again, rash, they will just have an argument in front of everybody. Everything they're saying is to just upset the other one. And like, I, like says, I, haven't, I haven't eaten that well since I was in the army, he says to Marge. Or that noisily dismissively says Luan. And then we cut to the, the most famous, the Pictionary. Do you want me to show the cat and have the cat tell you what it, what it is? He says, tapping the paper angrily. Uh, Marge is anxiously swirling some cloth because the cat's going to get it. I'm not sorry, I'm not as smart as you, Kirk. We didn't all go to Goodyear College. Actually, again, this is Roswell earning her $4,000 in this scene. The Gudger College isn't a real place. If you, if you weren't aware, they just picked something that sounded like a bad college. Oh, yeah. And I just like that uh, the aggression in her voice, like the sarcasm, we didn't all go to Gudger College. Just another, yeah, I just like this scene. Just the hatred just builds up between them where it's just obnoxious that there are other people in the room. Very funny. It did remind me of the Chevy Chasing from Community where he's trying to um, draw a windmill, but he just he's trying to swastika sticker with a circle around it. Oh, yeah. I just forget about that. It's dignity. Yeah, this it's, is one of the most famous Simpsons scenes. It's dignity. It's dignity. He draws a weird picture and then says, <laughs> it's dignity. Kirk, you're spitting. Rod and Todd, mom and dad look on. No wonder I can't yeah. draw dignity. I gave it up when I married her, points and throws the paper away. I like that. Kirk is entirely in the wrong in this entire <laughs> this entire party. Like, it's not... Luan just sort of responds and eventually breaks. But Kirk is the one just sort of openly insulting her in front of everybody. In the Pictionary part, for sure. But earlier, they were going blow for blow when they were I suppose, insulting yeah, each say. other. So she the Pictionary say. part is entirely Kirk being... A, Oh, it's all jackass. Then he's sort of rude to everybody in the room. He says, cram it, Churchy, to uh, Love Joy <laughs> at some point. Um, but yeah, he's just ready for a fight. And it's sort of, it's a good example of he's just taking Luan for granted. He's not angry at Luan at all. He's angry at, like, the world. But Luan is his vessel for the world. Like, the things he finds stupid about the world, he's just, just yelling them into Luan's face. So, um... he's not here for that. I find it genuinely uncomfortable at some point during the scene where she says, I would have had a drink, but he might loosen my tongue. Go ahead, Luan, talk. <laughs> Why don't you tell them one of your little bedtime stories, like the one about how rotten it is to be married to a loser? I did genuinely feel that that was a properly uncomfortable scene. Yeah, it's good as well. Like, I did cut this down a lot for time, but the pauses and cut into, like, Everybody else in the room reacting, especially Marge, who's like just wanted to have a nice party. The entire thing was about Marge having an adult dinner party, and this is how it's going. But everybody's reactions, like our cousin's cousins, have already Jay said it. Like, Ned, Ned's like protecting Maud from the awkwardness by like facing her the other way and stuff. And then yeah, Marge panics and gets Lisa to come in and start singing, and it's just yeah, it's it's very uncomfortable. It's great. Maybe an office person had something uh, a hand to play in it. Maybe. Maybe. How about the one where I carry a change purse? What's the name of that episode? This episode. Yeah. A mill house divided, as in a house divided. Who wrote it? Written by Steve Tompkins. He did not write any episodes of The Office. Interesting. 
did write the Bernie Mac show. Stephen Dean Moore uh, also did not. He did. He directed a lot of Simpsons episodes, including all the way up to season thirty-four. Um, he's still directing the Simpsons. He started at season six, and he essentially has edited at least, uh, sorry, directed at least two or three episodes in every season since season six. Interesting. Good for him. Stephen Dean yeah, Moore. SDM. Robert Downey Jr. Um, but no, no um, uncomfortable office connection. No, but it's definitely, it's in that vein, isn't it? Of Like British, quite British. In that it's the, the comedy is coming from how, how difficult of a time everybody is having. I believe they did an actual dinner party office of the um, episode of The Office in which yeah, Steve Carell like and, his, and his wife have a, a big fight about candles. Yeah, it's the best episode of The Office, I would say. Jan the Man. How about the one where I carry a change purse? Love, love, love your looks down. Yeah, a purse. Yeah, and I've caught out a lot of Homer stuff just because it was irrelevant to Kirk and Luan, but Homer interjects a lot. He says, shut up and let the woman speak when he says the thing about purse. This is prior to Jerkass Homer, right? But it is real Jerkass Homer stuff. Yeah, it's very like Homer just takes a backseat and gets to be funny. Luan. Yeah, they're just saying up like, Luan, it's surprising Luan has put up with all these things for so long, to be honest, if this is the situation that she's in. I love having to borrow money from from my sister or having to steal clothes from the church donation box. Lisa stumps by singing cheerfully. Kirk, I hope you're happy now. Luan, I haven't been happy for a long time. I want a divorce. Kirk is initially distraught, then taken aback. Divorce, sure, you got it, Toots, and here's a picture even you can figure out. It's a door. Use it. And then Jerk Asama shouts, that's a door? Yeah, good for Luan, really. It's a bad time to be doing this. And yeah, you can tell that Kirk Part of the thing, I think, is that neither of them really wanted to get divorced. Luan has sort of been driven to it by Kirk being awful. And Kirk just sort of didn't want to lose any face in this moment. He seemed, This goes away exponentially. But Kirk has a thing early on, like especially this episode, where he doesn't want people to look at him like he's a failure. Whereas he just embraces it after this. <laughs> like, even, like, there's clips in this later on where he's sort of proud of how much of a failure he is. Whereas this episode, he's adamant that people see him as a success. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot not... of shame. A lot of shame there for Kirk. Yeah. Homer... Home, home... <laughs> And, and, and my podge I look in at the window <laughs> to to see Kirk trying to get in the car as he opens the door the car speeds away leaving Kirk on the on the pavement and he turns her back at them and he says what <laughs> <laughs> again he's just an he's just an angry man he just wants someone to shout up Sim Springfield is filled with angry failures and at this point he's not even he has nothing he has nothing to even save face with so he just says what <laughs> You're like, why are you like? Why are you looking at me like this situation is unusual after <laughs> being invited, being invited to, and ruining the dinner party? <laughs> and uh, yelling at them for looking at him making a like making a scene late at night in front of the house. Oh, and then this would be the time where if they had gone a different. There's a lot on. A lot goes on in this episode, and it goes away from Kirk and Luan for like the second act entirely, pretty much, and goes to Homer and Marge. It's like you know, we don't want to end up like that kind of thing mm. this would have been the time where they would have moved kirk into the garage i think into the garage with brockman then demoted to the treehouse before finally being demoted to the shed uh, to, to the um to the garden itself and then possibly just to the park yes with roy part three someone like you loan is standing in front of a burning box as marge looks on from now on forget everything you know about Luan van houten actually Luan, i don't really know anything about you she turns forget it She's gone, presto, chain joy, kaboom, sweet Fanny Adams, and she charges off. Yeah, I like this. So there is a change. They don't do this really at all either, but they change Luan's outfit going forwards now. She goes from having quite a maudy, sorry, outfit Shut your mouth. to um, her, like, single living her best life outfit, which is her now, her go-to, even after, the, like, the reunion. But early Luan has a different, like, stock costume. It's that one. This one? No, the one to the left of that one. This one? No, to the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more buttoned up like traditional like oh she's a mum and a wife so let's put her in the, the clothes we've got all the mums and wives in and then here she gets a bit of a personality uh revamp oh, and i do like forget everything you knew about luan van houten actually i didn't know anything about you and she's not interested in listening no. she just in, luan has the kirk stuff where luan thinks that everybody's interested in luan as well but they're not yeah. But yeah, um, 
But she doesn't act it, I think, is quite such a pathetic midlife crisis where she's um, well, she kind of does. She she gets she hooks up with the gladiator and then cheats on him. She definitely does, but she she still definitely comes out of this. The overall establishment is that they do they do need to be married, and it, it is a good idea for them. But at this point, when they're figuring that out, Luan definitely has the better run. Kirk is the one who needs Luan wants Kirk back, like Kirk needs Luan back. Well, Kirk is in his dungeons and he says to Homer, I sleep in a racing car. Do you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much entirely an empty apartment, except for the racing car. And Homer says, I sleep in a big bed with my wife. Oh, says Kirk. That is the best. Uh, maybe that's a thing, a, a bold claim, but it's definitely one of the best Simpsons lines ever. The delivery from Homer. And like, the proudness of Kirk thinking that Homer's going to be jealous that he sleeps in a racing car bed. And then it just, it goes on to show how pathetic Kirk's life. Like, people, I think, like, three men arrive at the door who also just sort of, like, live in this apartment, like, losery-looking guys. And uh, Kirk says, what's going on? Are we having a patio party? And they say, no, there's, like, a dead raccoon in the uh, pool. And he says, I'll just, like, throw it over the fence. But, yeah, it's just, he, he seems to still not be uh, aware of how bad it's got for him. He, uh, I remember him cooking hot dogs by running them under warm water in the sink. <laughs> that is uh, Homer, but he does say... Water. One of the lines is like the next, like one day your wife's making you like a meal, and the next day you're thawing out hot dogs in a gas station sink. <laughs> and that's and not later, Kirk. That's Kirk says that, but then later at home, he gets home and there's there's hot dogs thawing in the sink for him, and he takes it as a bad sign. The one opens the door to a bodybuilder. God, I missed you, Lulu. So Chase, she swoons his millhouse boy and Bart Sampson look on. Chase, it's only been three hours. They run off together in a hamster ball. Yeah, so this is. Just the the stark difference between how it's going for Kirk and Luan here. Luan is sort of bound herself. Like, they're really giving her a good run in this episode. Not a lot of Simpsons characters come out of things this positively. She's just, at this point, like, yeah, she's looking after Luan, and it's paying off for her. Looking after and number then, Luan. And she's with someone who's like, everything Kirk is not. Basically. Well, here, the joke is either they do that and somebody absolutely ridiculous and totally out of her league, but it's kind of working and, and uh, reflects very badly on Kirk, or she hooks up with someone who's almost identical to Kirk, but yeah. but, but still better. Yeah, they went for trait number one, which is, yeah, more interesting probably. Well, they can always go to, to number two after that. I'm surprised they didn't, that she, yeah. she starts dating somebody who's very Kirkish. Yeah, we also, you over there in the corner said that about when Maud died. Shut up. <laughs> they surprised, and then they just, they did it in a bongo anyway, didn't they, Maud got on a hunting. Spoiler, Kirk is in a bar with Homer. The decidedly dicey-looking lass is with him. Say hello to Starla. She drinks her drink without taking the cigarette out of her mouth. Can I have the keys to the car, lover? I feel like changing wigs. Um, <laughs> Stella's uh, attempt at Kazog Radio 5.30. It's another fake, like, they do it, like, five or six times in this episode. Um, like, fake things that sound real, like Gudja College and Allied Biscuit and, like, Kazog Radio 4.30. She speeds away, tossing his demo tape out of the window. The tape of Can I Borrow a Feeling, which is crushed. And, uh, ah... At Kirk's feet, oh my demo tape, he puts hands to heads. Classic, homie hands the tape, can I borrow a feeling? And look at this, look at that proper jerk-ass Homer laugh. It was very <laughs> funny, properly mocking. It was, one, it was like, it's the same as when the guy in the college drops his notes. He can't, there's some laughs that he can't control and it's like, it's almost like he's throwing up. And yeah, he's just really, it ends with Kirk saying, go ahead, Homer, uh, like, go ahead home and laugh. Or, like, I bet you want to laugh. And he just says, like, I already did. Yeah, Kirk's still over, like, 30-plus years. Kirk's most famous and probably best moment is this song. But Starla, let's briefly touch on Starla compared to Chase. She's very Tress McNeil. She's a Tress McNeil character through and through, like, that voice. Oh, yeah. Of, like, the, uh... The rough diamond. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I feel like changing wigs. If we're going to know what, like... I think Starla might get her own episode one day because this is all we know about her. Oh, she, doesn't come back. she never comes back. So. Not to my knowledge. I feel like changing wigs. And then the fact that she just goes out and um, steals his car. There's absolutely no connection to her and Dolph either. So we're not having that. She is also Dolph Starbeam's neglective mother. She's so neglective, she's not even his mother. Not mentioned anywhere else. She only appears in this one. We threatened yeah, exactly. to do the tiny. 
the tiny like multiple um character episodes where we got like five characters who only appeared in it for like 30 seconds or something like that that's the shabadoo cast <laughs> what a ridiculous name <laughs> Come back, I still love you. But yeah, just the comparison is just that Kirk is not doing um, doing too good. But I like that he's at least found somebody. But again, he's just naively assumed that this woman is like, into him and also going to help him. She's going to help him start his music career, is what she's told him. And it seems like it was all to presumably steal this car. Get some free drinks and then he eventually just uh, abandoned him by taking his car. <laughs> the Stax Blues <laughs> Band is playing in the Simpsons room. He's in a tuxedo. Kirk is on stage and he says, hit it. And who's this, I asked? A little, a little orange broccoli. Shut your you mouth. After singing to Todd and Rod, Dad and Mum, and Simpson's Mum, he turns to Luan. How about it, Luan? Will you marry me again? He says, hopefully. Oh no, she says, disgusted. Well, can I at least have my shirts back? Nitro. Beefcake comes over. Oh, you heard the lady says, Nitro. Beefcake Pyro and exports Kirk to the door. I'll be back, probably. He is gone. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the, like, most depressing endings to an episode, probably. They're playing up on the trope that everything resets, aren't they? So it's like, oh, well, this episode's going to end. He, she just says, ew, no. And then he's asked to leave by her new boyfriend, and he just asks simply for his shirt spot and gets the door slammed in his face. And then, I'll be back, probably. He's not even How long is it? Himself. How long is it between this divorce episode and the remarriage? Uh, probably about a decade, I would say. Maybe 10, 11 years. This wow. is season eight. So that's 200 pretty... episodes of The Simpsons that happened while they were not together. Pretty much, yeah. I think they're back together for a while, but not remarried as well. So maybe slightly less than that. They are separated at this time. Roswell leaves, so you get a lot more Kirk than Luan, and you get a lot of Kirk parenting Milhouse poorly and references to Luan. Who does Kirk's Milhouse. voice? Azaria still, same as the start of this episode. He doesn't sound like him. Sounds like an American. Yes, he doesn't. He sounds quite non-Indian, doesn't he? I just assume that an Indian man would do the Indian voice for all characters, but what do I yes, know Kirk, about voice acting? Kirk is voiced by the man who does the voice for Kirk in India, too. Half four, strong. Dating auction. 75 shouts Luan, hopefully, but it's not for Kirk. Is it for Disco Stew, I ask? Kirk is briefly, is in the crew with comic book guy Molman, Barney Frink, Otto, Captain Mo. Kirk shouts back at her, you better have enough money to pay for my alimony, Luan. He does. Now, this is for Apu. This is when Luan is betting on, oh, like, um, what do they do when they hold up signs? Auctioning. Auction. Bidding. She is bidding on a date with um, Apu. And Kirk is angry about this. This might be the next time, because this is only like the season after. This might be the first time we see them post-divorce episode, sort of discussing the fact that they're still not together. But uh, what is alimony? Alimony, like, uh, like uh, child, child, support. Child, child support, right? Yeah, so why is she, why is she paying it to Kirk? Because he doesn't make any money. So the, the the point being that whatever she does, she, she makes so much more money than him that she's actually paying him. I'm guessing is the joke. I say yes, but I think Milos also lives with Luan. She's <laughs> just paying him for being Milos' father. So I don't think the alimony is always child. It, it can be any kind of maintenance. Oh, yes, there you go. A voice, a very Lisa E voice, comes from the tape deck saying, Gay divorcee Luanne Van Houten has been cheating on her boyfriend Pyro. He looks angry, she looks worried, with his best friend Gyro. Gyro moves into the scene and cut. Yeah, that one, this is where it all starts falling apart for Luanne, really. She's doing well until this point, and then she messes it up by cheating. Chase wasn't enough, Pyro wasn't enough for her, whereas Kirk was for like 15, 20 years. She's already bored of the, uh, probably not having to look after him, so she's then moved on to another one. But they, yeah, here's Lisa. They reveal, like, secrets about people from around town, and I think Luan's is probably the worst one. The rest of them are all sort of like, you know, like, oh, somebody used somebody else's bins. No, it's and interesting because the they, they put something in that then became quite a major plot point over the... So, how many, like, 
are there many stories that pan out like this over like essentially a decade? Like you could edit together all of Kirk and Luan's scenes from the dinner party till when they get back together. And it would essentially tell you the story of them getting back together over the course of like a decade. Yeah, no, there's not a lot of other stuff. And I think it just sort of happens anytime, anytime Mill houses, Mill House gets a few episodes, like, so anytime there's a Mill House episode, there will be some sort of like Kirk and Luan stuff will be brought into and it's just sort of wherever they needed. And once they were split up, it was just wherever they needed them to be at that particular time emotionally together. But I remember there is, there is a lot of jokes about, you know, like Mill House will tell Kirk how well Luan is doing when they're like separated. So it would be interesting to see they're both in it quite a lot. Obviously, like this is the thing you guys over there once again have said about Maud. Yeah, you have. If she hadn't have died in season 11, she would have been in the background all of the time because they just started using regular characters. So Kirk and Luan are in. Like, it's even, like, background or, like, one line. Probably like 80% of The Simpsons. How about so, other other characters that have such a long arc? Obviously, our our friend over there, Maud, who, who died, spoiler, and that's canon. T-shirt canon. Oh, did she die? Spoiler. Shut your mouth. That's canon. T-shirt canon. And um, no, to answer your question, are, are there are there any other that you, you see? Okay, this is an ongoing story that eventually resolves. Maybe Apu. What with him just book. disappearing forever? Well, yeah, but also from starting off like single and then gaining a family, and then Apu and Manjula don't have like a particularly great depiction of a marriage. Like they're always sort of consider the episodes about them too. Is it? you know, like, conflict, and then eventually, yeah, he just sort of, like, goes somewhere and vanishes. So I feel has, like, a big trajectory where his character changes a lot. But, no, I can't think of, like, a couple where they both go off and do things and then come back. And, again, it's just because, like, if the show had ended in, like, season 12, there's certain points where the show would have ended and Kirk and Loan would have had different endings, whereas most of the characters have just would have had the same ending. Yeah, most characters are just going around in a, in a cycle over and over again, but uh, they, they don't really change. But they, they, these go on a bit of a journey. Yeah, and the cycle for these two is basically, it's up and down depending on the episode. Like, sometimes they'll, after they've got back together, which we'll get on to, they'll show them either happy or sad or oh, angry. So they still, they still have ongoing run-ins even after they got back together? Yeah, but it's just like bickering, kind of like dinner party bickering, but instead of it being the whole scene, you know, it'll be like one line between the two of them. Uh, so that's kind of the defining trait. They kind of go back together and they realize that this is this is the thing for them, but they still have times where they dislike each other intensely. Yeah, they sort of, again, I think, Part of them, Luan, within the context of not outside of the show being designed, when they split up, if she has, like we said before, if she's got fake eyebrows and changeable glasses, if she really wanted to separate herself from Kirk, she would have changed how she looked. So there was still something in her that sort of like needed the Van Houtenness. And I think it's probably more she likes being in a family. She's not particularly, it's not Kirk specifically, but Kirk and Milhouse are also very similar. So she probably now just mothers Kirk. She needs to mother Kirk in the way that she also needs to mother Milhouse because she's a very smothering, way more so than uh, the other ladies in Springfield. More Mother than hugs. Shut your she's, mouth. She's way more like protective of Milhouse than the other parents are of their children. Okay. She's, um, the thing is that because Milhouse isn't growing up, like their age is not changing. She, she she's never getting out of this. It's not like so. But you know, in the real world, if this had been a real r live action, they would have got divorced in season ten when Millhouse was was already like fourteen or something like that. And then that would have been very different, right? So it's, it's interesting that the fact that the children don't get any older. Yeah, it is strange. Isn't means it? Like that they to... can do this. They, they can't. They, you couldn't do it in a live action. I think about all the Marvel stuff now. You know, they're 10, 12 years, and now they've kind of got rid of all, more or less, all the original Avengers. But the comics, the, those characters are still the main characters. And so, like, by the time you get to like phase eight of Marvel, unless they bring those characters back or reboot them in some way, you're going to just have like the entire team is just made up of second rate and knockoff kind of. Uh, like the children versions as well they're doing they're clearly doing like a young avengers thing because they've set up like young versions of almost everybody now yeah and, and all that makes sense that's fine the comics have done a bit of that but they didn't have to get rid of captain america or thor to do it 
Whereas, but The yeah. Simpsons, my point, I guess, is The Simpsons don't have to do that. They can just like the comics. They can just keep having Mill House be nine or ten years old forever, and uh, that that allows them to do this ridiculous thing where they're they're separated for a decade, but their child doesn't get any older. So then, when they reunite, they're still in literally exactly the same position as a family. Yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? And it's sort of. Yeah, the only other example I've got is Apu with the octopus, really. They age them, they're babies, and then all of us, you don't see them for a while, and then they're toddlers. And that's the only example of them changing anything, and I think it's because they just... I don't actually know why. I don't know why they did that. But time obviously moves there, and people feel the effects of time, and people clearly age because there are different ages of people. But you just don't, don't see, and it's never really established, which obviously it wouldn't be. You don't need... Indeed going for that but yeah the, the one a fresh start bright eyebrows kirk could you get a fresh start from marrying your own husband question mark question mark kirk is going well you can take millhouse the rich is in, is in the house right so she comes in and he's in the house visiting and there's this kind of awkward bit where he says oh i have visitors you're right um sorry i could hear two brendans could you hear that no Ah, oh, that's a shame. So, th so this is Luan's aiming to have a fresh start, isn't she? She eyebrows Kirk, and Kirk says, "Couldn't you get a fresh start from marrying your own husband, your old husband?" Kirk, we are going. Well, you can't take Millhouse, says Kirk. I have visitation rights. She slams the back of the van. And you're supposed to pay child support. Hey, I thought my money was no good, says Kirk. Even B. Simpson looks worried. Luan says. I said you're no good. So she's about to run away with AstroTurf, her American gladiator. And yes, no, I think that, that chapter's done. I think she's solo again now. All right. So she was up for a fresh start solo. Yes. Give me one how, second. How very modern. And I modern a feeling. And I loo on a house of love. I was just double checking. I don't remember talking about Starla, but we did, didn't we? Um, oh, yeah. This is Roswell's return. This is what really? they brought her back for. Really? Was she not in the one before? No, I think this is this is Luan returning from um, her at, like vow of silence from like five years. Where you down? And where where had she been? She had been silent, just just in Denver. I heard a rumor that Maggie Roswell was fired because of four thousand dollars. Yeah, I've heard that before, but it's it's just a rumor. Pass it on. What do you stop it? We can hear you. We haven't <laughs> gone that far. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ow. Kirk and Luan, eh? <laughs> no, it's good. I like that she's Luan, just done. I said it you're no good. Yeah, this is the most sort of heartless she is towards him, I would say. And it's just to do a whole, um, oh, look, Bart has to cope with that Millhouse and then realises that Millhouse is actually special to him and he should try harder, which is exactly what the Kirk and Luan story is. And I also guess. the Homer and Marge story in that Kirk and Milan episode. Also, all the stories. This is the and bottom the... of the valley. Is this this is the the lowest that Kirk ever gets? No, <laughs> I think it's the lowest he gets in this. In fact, it's not even the lowest he gets in this. In that dream sequence at the start, he has a failed suicide attempt. <laughs> Another <laughs> one for the Simpsons. <clears throat> no um, funeral. But yeah, this is Luan coming. And they could kind of. They could have got away, if Milos wasn't such a popular character, they could have gotten away with um, writing the one out here. This could have been a second Roswell exit. But if he was Wesley's mum. Yes, exactly. Wesley and Lulu. <laughs> they could have easily as well. Like, it's it's quite surprising that they brought Luan back because they could have just had it where, because it ends with Kirk saying, like, I got Milhouse back. You know, I got, um, I said they had to bring him home. They could have just left Milhouse with Kirk and had Luan stay in Capital City, but it's nice that they chose to bring her back to Springfield too. I guess this is not that exciting, right? If she went there, they might have got an episode or two of it, but it's not at her. It's not Laverne and Shirley. Well, just more in the context of writing her out so Roswell doesn't have to keep doing the voice. It yeah. would have uh, willed her down to just Helen Lovejoy then. Well, I suppose she doesn't have to fly there anymore, does she? No, it's all digital these days. Exactly. Digital Luan. Um, Next. Yeah, that's the meanest. That's that's her being the meanest to Kirk, I would say. And he sort of deserves it. Yeah, she's not giving him very nice eyes. And she's she's cold and heartless. And she's taking that child to Capital City to go pick up another American gladiator. Exactly. Jet. Ooh. Exactly. All night barn dance. In, sub 
In Simpsons House, Bart, Millhouse, Bart, Lisa. I got a court order to bring him back. He looks enjoyed. Proud Kirk judge says, I was the most pathetic person he'd ever seen in court. Yeah, as just previously mentioned, this is where they're just running with Kirk being a uh, a mole, except for in like... Mole man. Yeah, whereas mole man at least has self-pity. Mo and uh, Kirk, and there's probably some more examples, maybe Willie, like they sort of have like a, a pride in how how bad they are as a person. Like Kirk's Kirk clearly... Is a uh, shame. Yeah, he's he's sort of bragging, whereas the reason they got divorced was because of Kirk's sort of like internalised shame coming out. Like he didn't want to be looked at like a failure. Like even the whole, um, you know, like when he says what, when, they, uh, when the car drives off, he's still like, what are you looking at? There's nothing wrong here. Whereas now he's openly like, yeah, the judge said I was the worst person he's ever seen. Isn't that great? I got Milhouse back. Well, he won though, didn't he? Yeah, but it feels like maybe that was a, a big step in them reuniting was Kirk admitting or accepting that actually, yeah, I am a failure and I don't mind people knowing about it. Well, I think that's a big step forward, isn't it? It's very brave for Kirk. But w did Luann grow in any way? Yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, why, not? why not? She grew in the sense that she realised that... I think they both grew in the sense that they thought they wanted to split up and then the next five or six seasons off screen, they realised that they tried other things and it wasn't what they wanted and they sort of both missed each other, was what I've gone for in this series of clips. Yeah. Are you happy that they got back together though, right? Um, I'm indifferent. To be perfectly happy. I probably would have preferred them to just keep it changed up if we're going to do it. Have Luan marry Ned, like I said, and have Kirk marry... Mandrula. Lenny. Don't tell anybody how I marry. Exactly. P.S. Miss you. Kitchen of kitchen of Millhouse House. Kirk. Luan, what are you doing there? I thought you were just dropping Millhouse off. I could get some coffee and come back, says Luan. No, no, no. You stay. I'll drive home. He puts his hands in his pockets and pulls out a tube, plastic tube, and says, okay, who's going to let me siphon? Yeah, just another mole. <laughs> that's, when they're really, that's, that's what they kind of do in these seasons. That's where the only real comedy comes from. So it's like 18 minutes of weak Bad comedy jokes. and then like some good pathetic man comedy for like two minutes. Exactly. Um, this is as well. I thought this might have been a given at this point after after 100 plus episodes and your own personal 33 years of experience. But that is the Simpsons kitchen. <laughs> Not for, the me, for me, I don't I, think, I don't see kitchens. Yes, exactly. Um, context would have helped as well. They're at like a chicken pox party. Chicken pox trying to party. give all the kids TPP. TPP thing. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so I sort of like the, there's a... Like, they've clearly come to some kind of arrangement. There's no animosity when she arrives. They're just, like, it's very matter-of-fact. Like, oh, I'll come back in a bit if you want. Like, she's not bothered that he doesn't want her there. And then he's like, actually, I don't mind if you stay. So it's sort of, this is the most reasonable we've ever seen them being together, I think. See the olive branch out, right? This is Luan's... She never went to Capital City because Kirk got to keep the boy. Is that right? Yeah, so there would be some... They did go to Capital City and move away for like a month or whatever it is, like within that episode. And then the end of the episode is Kirk saying like, oh, I got Middlehouse back. And then this is the next Kirk and Luan sort of story, which is maybe like two years after that one. They're all, they'd all, the bulk of the Kirk and Luan stuff happens in like the weakest seasons, like between like 15 to like 19. Coincidence? I think not. It's like they were just trying to do something. Like, I think it was just easiest with Millhouse to, instead of doing a Millhouse episode, they just did something, the story revolved around Kirk and Luan, and then it was just Millhouse's response to the, the actions they were doing. So it was just a lot of Kirk and Luan. Yeah, I think this this is the episode where Staying they get back. fireworks for Panda's book. Yeah, but I will. I'll come back to it in a second. But Luan's reasoning is pretty uh, lack. But yeah, I like that the... The furnace and the sort of co-parenting. This is the this is probably the balance they needed if they weren't going to reunite. Yeah, I got that. This was kind of uh, two people that were just starting to see that maybe it might be better if they were nice to each other or, or even back together. This is the beginning of the upswing. Yeah, and again, it's uh, Kirk's completely changed, which is what Luan needed. Like Kirk is in the room now with a tube, saying, "Who is going to let me suck gas out of the car?" Whereas, yeah, that dinner party was upset because um, they were losing at Pictionary and he was looking like a loser at a game. 
kind of hairy. He embraced you know, him because of that. So when when she eventually gets back with him, does he continue the loser like streak? Is that still his thing? Yeah, excessively so. Like <laughs> I think Kirk is the sort of it's sort of flanderization, isn't it? It's Van Houtenization. Yeah, where... I'd like to see it. I'd like to do one on on Milhouse Dad. That's just all the funny, pathetic ones. Yeah. That's what I mean. Kirk and Luan, definitely more so Kirk, especially for humour. But they both have their own separate stuff going on outside of Kirk and Luan. What does Luan sort of, have? She's just sort of like an investor at her. In a similar way to how Maud has things, sorry, Maud going fans. on with, yes, from The Simpsons, um, Ned's watch. <laughs> she has, like, you know, little scenes with Helen where you can sort of see a different Take all song. of our names out of your mouth. Exactly. Eat all of our names. Um... Yeah, Luan has little, like, female friend stories occasionally. Especially, like, Luan's probably Marge's closest friend for a while, because they don't ever really know what to do with Marge having a friend, yeah, even though he has got every friend in Springfield. He has, they don't spend a lot of time, but it's not like Betty and Wilma. No, no, you don't have any anything. I think he did it, didn't he? Um, Dan Hartman. Somebody wrote, like, a, oh no, it's Bojack Horseman guy, wasn't it, about All right. Marge has no friends. Yeah. Yeah, we, we used to have a thing called the Mauditorium. We did. You didn't. They did. That's why I said we did. Oh, right, well, go sit down. It's not your show. What about her? Uh, so, Kurt, so Kurt is in Simpson Kitchen. She chugged the jug. Woozy. <laughs> Woozy. She chugged. She chugged. She chugged the jug. No, 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 I missed a bit. Anyway, so he gets the siphon out and he, and he gets all of the stuff out of the car. The next, we see a kitchen jug of margaritas. The one. Kirk, you look good. Have you been working out? Kirk, well, dogs have been chasing after me. Well, no one's chasing after me, says Luan. What about your last boyfriend? The one who would always go to the gym after visiting you and have place, lunch at that place downtown. You know his taillight is broken. Luan, I am not seeing him anymore. Kirk, does that mean there might be a chase of me? She chugged the jug, woozy. <laughs> Almost anyone's got a chance now. <coughs> Millhouse stood at door watching them start to get frisky. They smooch and he shouts, great Lizzie McGuire. Yes. I only left that in because it was a funny Millhouse line. Um, she chugged the is, jug. She did. That's a mug I don't want to chug. Duffman. Um, as far as there hasn't been a Duffman cast, there will be. No way it will be. Um, this is a very normal Sort of the same as the dinner party, but that was much funnier. It's just a very normal scene for a Simpsons episode. Kirk and Luan sort of bring it back to being what it was at the start, which was a cartoon, like non-cartoon. Like it was supposed to be more... Like a Flintstones rip-off. Yeah, like realistic. I would say not a Flintstones rip-off, actually, because they the are... modern, modern their... family. Yes, all of their animals talk. Modern family guy. Um, yeah, so they represent the sort of real, like they're just an arguing couple who are like reuniting. And, um, and I do like so Kirk. Kirk's just, Kirk's glowing in his shame, basically, isn't he? Like he has no, like, have you been working out a couple of years ago? Would have been like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this and this and like running marathons with Wolf Castle and et cetera. And now he's just like, no, dogs have just been chasing. Me. Dogs have just and been I think chasing. she likes that. He likes the honesty and like the the fact that he's sort of comfortable being a loser makes him more appealing to Luan, which in turn makes him less of a loser. So um That's true. Paradox Van Houten. Um she the the reasoning for Luan's pretty laps here, it's just um she's given up trying new things and she's drunk. Which makes it's... sense, wouldn't it? But then you think they would go back on it and the rest of the episode would be like Luan saying like, oh no, that was a mistake, but Kirk's like fully back on board and he's trying to win her back over, but she's just back on board. He's back on board, baby's back on board, she chugged the jug, and baby's back on board. Exactly. Midhouse mum, Midhouse dad, back together. Could you hear that beautiful tune? Yes, that has been used in a Simpsons scene at some point, I can't remember what it is. Yeah. It's classic, isn't it? That. It's easy, it easy for a cast mm -hmm. cast. Load bearing no fruit. Blink 182's miss you, is it? It's no Blink 199. Gonna get you, baby. Blink, blink 182. One well, none dead and eighties. Great, Lizzie McGuire. They get <laughs> frisky. She chugged the jug. He shouts, great, Lizzie McGuire. Now, that's a, that's a family scene. Yes, that is a family scene. And now they're um, back together. It's really that simple, isn't it? Yeah, and they just keep them... Um, well, I'll come on to it in a minute, actually. Yeah, they're not married straight away. But as of now, yeah, I think this is just... I think in background scenes following this, they're just, you know... Back to, but she keeps her outfit 
her outfit changed when she became single, but it does not return to the prior outfit. So that sort of shows that she's more true to herself. And That's right. so is Turk. She changed and she chugged the jug. <laughs> At desk, they talk to Milhouse. Your father and I are going through what they call a trial and separation, air quotes. The, unlike the breakup, this is not your fault. They sit on a swing. We should probably talk about everyone we date while we separated. Luan says, well, the sea captain, she starts to get the hands out to count the number of trophies that she's got from Springfield Poontang. We should probably talk about everyone. And Kirk shakes his head and says, yeah, I don't want to know. And now Miles' house is between them on the swing. Your dad and I need more time to get reacquainted, they laugh menacingly. When why are you laughing? Tell me, demands Millhouse. Nice. I think he then says, I cut it out, but he then says, inside jokes are rude. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's very true. It is. Luan's very frisky as a character, is what Hamzy. we've picked up on. Yes. Lou Hans. Um, Lou Hans Van Frisky. Yeah. It's a How shame she didn't name check some more uh, cast casters. Who else because would she have name checked? I think Lionel Hutz probably would have made it in there. Willie would have made it in there. Sam the Barefly might have had a shot. Leopold. Yeah. Skinner. Yes, not a Casca's character, but just a Simpsons character. Yeah, so all of the grown-ups, basically. Mostly males. Yeah, Santa. Santa. What did yes. she do with the jug? She chugged it. She chugged Santa the jug. Santa. Ooh la la. Kirk is pushing a trolley full of old rags and a TV. Luan, I'm moving my stuff back in. Millhouse, Millhouse points. Mom says you're stinky and gross. That is great. I mean, she used to keep her criticisms all bottled up until they destroyed our marriage. So Kirk, Kirk is coming back into the house with a, with a trolley full of essentially garbage, his only belongings. Did Millhouse ever actually live with him? Or was no, he just he, he doesn't have a house. We've seen him in what happened to the what happened to the uh, race car department. I think I assume he stays there actually. But yeah, there is a whole like you see a lot of especially because uh, Luan didn't speak for so long. You see, a lot of Millhouse with a parent is Millhouse and Kurt. Okay. Um, but he's just, just not very good at it. Or he's still sort of like there's the one. <laughs> what's I don't know if I sent it to you last week in the uh, gap. But when he comes on stage at the school. And Skinner introduces him as Bart's friend's dad. And it's like career day. And he says, do you know the guy who puts the flyers under the windscreens? I'm his assistant. I'm his assistant. Yes. And then Is, that in here? Is that in here? No, it should have been. But I only found it literally whilst we were making the last, the first half of this. Um, I think you played it. Milo shows you know mom's getting remarried as well. Which is, again, so this must have been prior to what we've just seen happen. So probably gyro or pyro, and then it all fell apart, didn't it? Yeah, do you think but, she ever really got it on with, with um, gyro? Or was it just a, a mistaken dalliance? Uh, probably a dalliance, but it was truthful, because all the, all the secrets the kids were telling were true secrets. It's just because the kids knew the secrets because they lived with the adults i just Some like i just like kirk's apartment like a trash heap land isn't it like uh, when um this one where he's got an eye patch and he's sat in his underpants playing a, a game boy oh yeah i've seen that i saw a clip of that as well he gets arrested like for um i can't remember like but like they know that it's not him eventually but they still arrest him well it's a kidnapping thing isn't it yeah i think possibly yeah i think the kids pretend they've been kidnapped by kirk isn't that in here no, I think I might have also sent you that last week. A lot of things did not make it, and then some things made it and then got cut out because it was like 14 minutes. So, so it means a lot of Kirk and Luan. Oh yeah, this episode is like two and a half hours long. P6, I can't help Phil. Park, <laughs> matching sweaters. Oh Luan, I have some big new smiling. We're getting remarried. Milhouse says, finally, you guys will stop using me as a pawn in your fights. Mother says, Milhouse, you're not a pawn. Did your father say you were? Kirk, <laughs> now we're family again. You can stop your lie. Yeah. <laughs> so they're having like a picnic in the park where they announce that they're getting remarried to, to Miles' house. <laughs> Who does yeah, he say the, you I'm... can stop your lying to? Milhouse. <laughs> I think it's just making it seem like Millhouse has been uh, the issue all along. When the he... catalyst for this. Yeah, which again, he says something, doesn't he, a bit earlier, like, we're getting back together and unlike the divorce, this is absolutely not your fault. It's literally what I just said. Yes, that is exactly what you just said. <laughs> Chug. Um, I, I forgot, yeah, I forgot to mention the bit where they where Millhouse says the thing to Kirk and it doesn't work. 
about um, that was his attempt to. Luan didn't say that, but Melex was trying to get them to split back up. And How is that? Because he got two two sets of allowance or something. Yeah, he, pre- he just preferred it when they fought over him because he got more attention from both of them independently. So he just said he puts Margie's bra on the uh, on Kirk and Luan's bed. Oh yeah, well, that's where that that's whole when... story came from, wasn't it? In the in the beginning yeah. part, where someone had written as if, as if that was an actual um, affair by Kirk. Yeah, and then yeah, she goes to Homer and he basically says, "I don't know who you are," and no no woman in her right mind would sleep with Kirk Van Houten. Who says that? Homer to Luan. <laughs> All right, beach sign Van Houten wedding. Please do not kick sea turtles. Luan Luan comes down the aisle. Melhouse is holding the train and Lovejoy is on duty. They finally realise, as they do again later, that there's something amusing to be had by the Van Houten's removing their spectacles. Yeah, the tiny eyes thing. And I like that that, um, that transcends to the action figures of Kirk and Luan and, and Melhouse, actually. Their eyes, once you, you take the glasses off and underneath they do have tiny, tiny eyes. Well, this is one of the benefits of the figures because I think that in previous years, before we ever saw their eyes on the show, it was only with things like figures that you could do that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and I think they sort of established with Milhouse early on that he had very small eyes underneath the glasses, but they never really... They did it with Kirk here. I don't know if there's any other examples. And the ones seem to just be kind of not... They're, they're smaller, but they're not, like, tiny. Like we Kirk see them in a little while, don't we? We'll, we'll get to yeah. that, but... Uh, have you glass... have you noticed as well that Marge is wearing sunglasses in the crowd? I do not. Homer, uh, Homer doesn't know her eye colour, so he, she says he can't look at them until he remembers. Oh, the, oh, the, oh, the, the thrills of season 20. Exactly. So that's the main plot. That's the A story. Pretty much. Do you take Kirk to take Luan to have and to rehave and rehold? And Luan, do you take Kirk, who is fundamentally the same man that you said in court was unfit to load your dishwasher? Mm, says Kirk, who's very touched, repulsed you, who's annoying Kirk stops him. You're reading an early draft of our vows. Just say I do. Kiss the bride. Nice. It's odd that this is one of the very few wedding scenarios I can see where they say you may kiss the bride and then you don't see them doing that. It just cuts away to like, I think it cuts away to like the turtle doves or something, like attacking the buffet. But um, yeah, kind of nice. Nice but funny. This is sort of done relatively well. But you can sort of, I wish we'd seen that bit in court, but you can picture it quite nicely with Lovejoy's monotone delivery of Luan angrily. <laughs> Just listing things Kirk cannot do in court. And I like that the um these must have made it. It doesn't sound like Luan wrote these vows. It sounds like a third party wrote these vows because they're not coming from... He's, he's like paraphrasing Luan. He's not saying it as if she's writing these things, saying you are the man who's very, you know. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it, to be honest? No. Early so or late. Lovejoy could just have been riffing the very man <laughs> exactly and then he, she just does he just says he i said did. in court was unfit to load your dishwasher yes very touch repulsed you but yeah i do like that that at some point they were a part of the vows and then they he's but kirk already knew at some point they were part of the old vows as well like kirk's heard that before well yeah he, he, probably, he probably wrote it that's that's possible and then he thought i'm going to i'm going too hard here I'm too hard in the paint on myself. Exactly. P7 lost interlude. Have this one's un- just for me. This could have easily been completely cut out. Ah, uh, you'll have to help me here. Have un aunt seons if you don't kayak mode so maybe not. <laughs> have fun at the Simpsons if you don't like Mrs. Simpson's cooking, you have your mommy meals. With the Stretch voice. Luan. With the voice? Yeah, she does the voice. What voice does she do? Just Luan's. <laughs> that makes sense. You- and uh and then they go off on a cruise, right? So Millis is going to the Simpsons house for a few days and she's cooked him some meals to take with him. And then they dance on the ship. We're going to start right this time. This is a honeymoon, I guess, right? We're going to start right this time, says Kirk. I'm going to carry you over the threshold. There's the old sitcom joke, isn't there, of the, of the lady carrying the man over the threshold. So, oh, such such wayward gender laws. Exactly. And they, they don't even do it here. They just allude to it. And that when he's saying that, I don't know if you've got a an image of Luan, but it's the weirdest Luan I've seen. No. I will provide one for you now. You may continue talking, or not. They fall off the boat through the casino, and the boat goes away from them. 
Luan, is that you nibbling at my knee, says Kirk. But somehow they manage to wash up on a beautiful island where they roast chicken and build a hand glider. They're about to fly off a cliff. I can't wait to see our little mill house. Their mill house somehow, with Bart, an Indian man, finds them in a hot Indian. air balloon. Mill you mean house. Indiana Jones, man? That's what I mean, Indiana Jones, man. In, an Indiana Jones type man in a hot air balloon, a mill house, hi... We're so glad you're alive, he says. Yeah, it's worth pointing out. I left this in kind of because it, within the story of things, it's a very odd. Blue Mini? Yes. Um, within, since that clip where Luan said we're getting remarried, all of this is the same one episode. Right. It seems like about 10 different episodes um, that they go through. But I'd say that this this happening is probably what kept them together. The fact that they got... I think they're gone for like a month or something, maybe longer. Like they're stranded on this island for a while and they clearly make it work and become self-sufficient. In, and... in the same episode though, right? Yeah, li literally from, from them saying when they're dressed in the same jumpers for some reason and they say, we're getting remarried. All of this is all the same one 20 minute episode. So it's the best episode, best best Kirk and Luan story at least. Yeah, it seems like that's it's the one that, but you don't from when they get shipwrecked there or when they fall off the boat. Language. There's like there's like ten ten minutes of the episode, so like a, a good half of the episode where you don't see them. It's all right. alluded to that they have just you know they haven't died, but you don't know where they are and everybody else thinks they are dead. But Bart and Milhouse and Indiana Jones go searching for him. And Indiana Jones is Luan's brother. Kirk's brother, I believe. Norbert, which Norbert. again, not not into that. If we're talking about Van Houten relatives, it's Nana Van Houten and Annika Van Houten, and no more. No more. But eventually yeah, they're saved. Them. Yeah, they just, they would have escaped anyway, but then they're also rescued by Millhouse and, and Millhouse uncle. That's and Millhouse maybe friend. they wouldn't have, maybe that, that hand glider, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no uh, engineer, but I, I, I don't think a hand glider, a fully functioning hand glider for two people is that easy to build from twigs. No, it seems like, but the, the, yeah, they've had a while to work on it. We've just seen the end result. They could have tried it like five or six times already. But yeah, whatever happened to their to them, death. Yeah, this is what made them a happy couple again. There's still, like a, again, from like season 20 to now, you see frequent Kirk and Milhouse, no, Kaching, Luan, uh, like bickering episodes, not episodes, but like, you know, within a clip, within a scene, within the story, there might be some kind of Kirk and Luan disagreement. Oh, yeah. You still see more of that than more, like, them being affectionate towards each other. But I think them getting shipwrecked probably helped them language um, probably help probably help them in the probably help them in the long run yes that's a traumatized you them he chugged the jug part eight young hearts the investor at two kirk loves his keyboard kirk you're working this shirt i bought you it's closely millhouse dressed as kirk kirk you're yeah. wearing that shirt i bought you it's clearly millhouse dressed as kirk right yes. i love it when you buy me coats you know what itchy and what's, and what's not. not. And what's not. Yeah, there's a, a very weird episode where um, Melhouse realises that he puts on, like, a tie. And something happens where, like, if he, if, if he closes his throat, he sounds like Kirk. And Kirk goes away or something, so they just think, oh, well, this is fun, we can pass you off as Kirk and have, like, adult fun, like, driving around and stuff. And I think this is the only... Luan doesn't realise that it isn't Kirk, but she still likes that she gets, like, a compliment from you know, Millhouse Kirk, that's enough for her to be like, oh, this is, there's a bare minimum for Luan, it seems like. All he has to do is sort of be, all Kirk would have to do is be mildly appreciative, and Millhouse just does that naturally, because he, Millhouse appreciates Luan, whereas Kirk does not. No, Millhouse is, is kind of, he's kind of sweet, really, in the end, Millhouse. Yeah, he's definitely a, a Luan's boy. Oh, Kirk Van Houten, she kisses him on the cheek and walks away. The next Kirk thing Evelyn. is... Kirk Evelyn Van Houten. <laughs> That's right. That's his middle name, isn't it? Kirk Evelyn Van Houten. Exactly. Watch this clip before it goes off that I just Can sent I you. A and your <gasps> That's a mug you don't want to chug. But you also know because it says recording in progress, right? That's true. Anyway, oh, Millhouse, our son has one, two, eight friends. They are shaking hands with Martin. More than that, he is friends. He is the leader. What I find amusing 
is how tall the, the, the bullies are. The bullies are very tall. <laughs> Do you remember when Mill when when um what's the when the haha bully when we, he was new when the haha bully was new? <laughs> Do you remember how big he was? He used to be very big. He used to be very big. Now, do you think this friendship sharing is genuine? Yes, I believe it is. I don't think, um, I don't believe, I don't remember what it's from, but I don't think anybody's making fun of him. No, so Kearney, Kearney's got a child, hasn't he? We can see the back of Wallace's head, <laughs> big database. Is that database the right size? That one is, yes, but the figure of database is very small. Really? His name is Wendell. How, how tall would you say the database figure is compared to, say, Lisa Simpson figure? <laughs> like smaller. By like a, a centimetre like yeah. centimeter or two? Yeah. Oh. Like... <laughs> so who do we have here in this ring? Who's, uh, we've got Martin, Ha Ha Bully, Jimbo Jones, Kearney Senior, Cosine, Ralph Wiggum, Wallace, database. Actually, that's Hubert Wong. Hubert Wong? Shang-Chi? Yes, Shang-Chi yeah. Wong? <laughs> That's right. It's Hubert Wong from Shang Chi. Was was he as played an, by Ten Rings Shang Chi? He was as an adult. Good trivia. And what's also, this, I who's, thought what's this floating a, head? I can't see. I, it might be Millhouse Mum. Can't spell. My dog's got no nose. Why are they shaking hands? I don't. Uh, I don't know. They shake Milhouse hands. He's more than friends. He's the leader number one. They're on couch, relaxed. What's Herbert Wong? Was he introduced maybe later, say season 13 or something? Is it yes. like diversity <laughs> drive? Roughly that, yes. I think, um, I thought he was always there, but apparently he wasn't. But I should, I'll fact that check. I'll fact that check before the Wong cast. They do my fact checking, cuz. Shang Chi and the Ten Wongs. They're ten on Wongs. couch. Luan is relaxed. I'm feeling this wave of relief, not worrying about my son's social life. I can stop being a mother and start being a loose top button woman, she says. Sherry Houston. Sherry Houston. Um, do you think that this shows that <laughs> do you think this shows that Millhouse was probably to blame all along? I think so, yeah. I think that might be um that's what it's certainly implying here, because they've said it a couple of times before. They've act, like actively blamed Millhouse, but I think there's more going been, on. Yeah, it's been shown that there might be more. To it than it just being that simple but millhouse being happy definitely makes them too happier we can't we can't blame millhouse for all of the problems no. look luan doesn't have glasses on i wonder if that's the first time since the action figure i think it is this is a picture of kurt without glasses on but i'm, I'm pretty sure we talked about that bit yeah i think we got that because i sent you the pictures during the break true millhouse mom millhouse uh, mom. This is normal eyes. also i didn't say this in the unrecorded version but uh roswell's luan I think I said it last time, though. Roswell's Luan gets the most emotional range vocally. Like, you can get the most from her dialogue. Um, like, her emotions are Running more on show. Yeah, everybody else is more... Helen's sort of wild, actually, but Helen's only emotion is, like, like that overreaction fear. Maud's definitely um, reserved, stop talking about her. Take them words out of my... This is the more... Um, she, she's got a range of emotion. That I wouldn't say it's super wide. But she, she has more than the cardboard cutout that is Marge Flanders. Exactly. ka -ching. Stop talking about her. No. I haven't daydreamed that they're smooch. Say it again, they're smooching. Our son has friends. Now yeah, that's creepy. There's someone, uh, the ring doorbell camera's just gone off. It looks like, it looks like someone's getting out of a taxi and they're going to get to the door in like five-ish minutes. He has a lot of bags, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Oh, is what it James you, Woods? It, it, it might be Drake. I don't know. I can't tell. Was he, oh, was he talking to his ring, what he bought off the internet? He's in a big orange coat, shaking his head and then, then nodding then his head. And then nodding his head and pointing. Um, yes. Millhouse. Um, end Millhouse. I haven't daydreamed in colour for so long. He wakes up in ambulance. Mum and Dad are there. Oh, thank God we were afraid we lost you, son. Yes, beginning clip, but cut to leave at end for humour. I do like that the Millhouse's nicest dream resulted him in just collapsing and they had to ring an ambulance and deal with that whilst he had this lovely fever dream about his parents getting back together. But that's it. even with like even when nice things happen to Millhouse, it's a bad thing. Like it, this was nice for Millhouse, and it ended up with him being hospitalised. There's also That's there's his the life, one where, isn't it? again unrecorded content. The one where Mister Burns says there's a little crippled boy in hospital. I think it's before like the I think it's the softball one. It might be later. Um, if you don't. If you don't win, and then it cuts to Millhouse in hospital and says, I hope they win. If they don't, Mr. Burns says he's coming back. <laughs> is that like a minutes. threat? Like he's going to come and get him, or it's just that they don't want him? Yeah, I think the, 
Mission is Mr. Burns crippled him, and then if he comes, if they don't win, he's going to cripple him further. Um, all right, so Mart here, he is a uh, Kirk House Van Houten, and he's drawing the dignity sign, what he always does, and it's drawn in felt tip pen. It's pretty well rendered by Icky Etsy. Oh, that is very good. That is a good first time viewing of that image. It's like shadows, it doesn't, it's Simpsons y, but it's far enough away that it's someone else's style. Looks I like, also uh, like that guy on like. Kirby and Thieves, doesn't he? Yes, uh, Larry Davis. Head dancing. It looks, Larry Davis. It looks like um, the pens are like the real pens that have been added as a sort of frame. Uh, yeah. And it's the infamous dignity, which lots of people get tattooed on them. They do. Why do you ever see, ever imagine Kirk Van Houten's face as a dignity? Well, that is unexpected. That is, again, uh, that looks like a tattoo design. It's tattoo um, waiting to happen, isn't it? Yeah, it also looks like when people make, like, merge Simpsons with Pokemon. Merge oh, Simpson. Exactly. In fact, merge Flanders. A prison tattoo of Kirk Van Houten, please, for my birthday. Exactly. How about this one? It's a t-shirt of Kirk in all of his greatest hits, ripping his shirt off, drawing the dignity, but classily they've hidden it. He's in flames and he's even got the tape. You'll like this. The tape's flying off into the car, like what Shanksy did when she ran over it. It is good. Uh, yeah, it's a very 80s band t-shirt. Uh, I don't think well. it was banned. No, you don't know child's play. Kirk, Kirk's play, that's not. Very clever. The middle one of him ripping his shirt open is great. I think that's from when after he shouted, let's get naked. And he shouted, <laughs> that's, this part is just getting started. Um, other than that, all those pictures come from that from the same one episode. Uh, oh, it's Kirk's high point, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very beautiful piece of merchandise. Much better than the shitty ones where it's just the picture of the Can I Borrow feeling tape. How about this one? This and is drawn by our favourite, Emma Emily. Hall. Emily, Emily Hall. Hall. Zorg. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I will, it's, I'll say what I said. It's almost like Kirk Van Hopeful. <laughs> he looks optimistic. Great piece of art, great shadow. Emily Hall is one of our favourites anyway across the multiverse, so that's something we can all agree on. All agree, so, um, exactly. Beautiful painting. A beautiful, there. beautiful piece of work. Some 3D designs here of um, Skinny Face McNulty. With a cat and dog jacket in 3D from Shrot and Sharp. Yeah, he's wearing a jacket made of stuffed animals, but not Mr. Burns see my vest animals. But if you put a 3D glasses on it, it'll leap out at you. That's true. And take your, siphon your gas. Where his nipples are for eyes, poke your eyes out. Exactly. It's quite hard to look at. It's impossible but it's to look at. It's easier to look at than this. <laughs> what about this one? This is something fun to look at. That, that is great. It's Milhouse's mother, but as a backwards letter P. Her face is all off her. I like that she doesn't look like... They've not drawn her in the style of a different cartoon, which some people may do with well, that's other characters. Cheap, cheap crass tactics, yeah. isn't it? Lazy. And what were those um, with like only the, seven minutes left? She does look fun with teeth. Um, fun with teeth is her yeah. favourite game show. <laughs> yeah, all flat, big left arm. Brilliant, Great because everything's a bit wonky. It, it's, it's definitely a bit Reeves or what's that dude called? Simpsons oh, yeah. artist, Chris Simpsons. Yeah, it is, um, but it doesn't look like it's intentionally bad. It just looks oh, like no, a no. Charles rendering, Charles which is Charles. fine. I, I, I'd how much rather these, that than this. How about these Luan Van Outen muscles? Yeah, this is a trait. A trait we've seen before. Not particularly interested. It's well rendered. Uh, I prefer the ones where they make them like really heavy set. Boobs. What yeah, about like these, the, this guy? They kept the colour theme for Luan's bikini and thong in purple and white. Oh, yeah. So that's and it's good. not smutty. But no. here, the, here, this guy, whose name I can't remember, draws different characters and he, and he did Rick and Morty. And all of these, they work really well. I think it's interesting how uh, such a, a low rent third tier character is so recognisable and so malleable. Yeah, it is. Um, he's yeah. an easy character. That's great. But it but it's it's very realistic. It is, I like that. I would I would own that. Um one in one sec. Doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I like the different styles. Kirk lends himself well to different styles of animation. I think it's the glasses and the eyebrows, which a lot of characters in The Simpsons don't have. Like it would be harder to do this with like Leopold. Um yeah, the Rugrats, Doctor Seuss, Disney, Family Guy, Fairly Odd Parents, Quentin Blake, Wiki How, and Larry David. Larry um, David, I sleep in a big bed with my haiku. My wife will. Charlie and the Cracker Factory is good. Uh, yeah, all very great. The Family Guy one in particular just looks very accurate. Like, it looks like a Family Guy character that they've recolored as Kirk. What about Kramit Churchfish? Yes, exactly. I like Kramit Churchfish. 
What's the name um, of this character in the Family Guy? The one that was married to the one that died? Yeah, so it's just Mort Goldman. What does he look like? Like that, but with like pink skin and orange hair. Oh yeah, I recognise it. A bit like that. Yeah. More recognisable. And that's it. That's it. Oh, emerging from... Yeah, I have woken up. And I say this, I am the Blackbird of the North. The Hound of One Dark Mountain Rollers and all that. Lies beneath them prints or powers of Earth. I am present and guard the circle from all the perils coming from North. And demand to see Selena Estetis. Take me to her. Selena Estetis. Selena Estetis. Selena Estetis. Oh, brilliant. It worked. My magic spell worked. And your son is cured from vampirism and the desire to drink blood. Jock, you must become a baby. Coochie, coochie, coo. You already have done. Brilliant. You're ahead of it. Rabbi, are you happy? No, I'm not. I am veining the ritual. Who is that? Is that, rapper? Is that? Is that the rapper Drake? Hi, oh, yeah, me. I'm right. It is, it is me. Drake. It's me, Tupac. Will you bring me some chewies from shop? No. I'm a ring, I'm not not a bloody servant. Oh, Topak, will you give me a kiss on cheek? No, I don't do that sort of stuff. Don't save that mucky stuff for after hours. Oh, Topak, can you help me if I become a really good poem? Nah, you've got no chance, mate. All your pencils are broken. Oh, Topak, can I ride around you like a scooter? No, I'm a ring, mate. Ring, mate. <laughs> Have a lie down now. The end. The end. Well, thanks for joining us, Drake. Uh, somebody needs to change Derrida. Pierre, I think you should have to do it in some kind of reverse Freudian thing. Also, don't drink his blood. He's a baby. And he's your dad. Reverse Oedipus. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. Hello, Florence. And the other one, I hope this voice note reaches you well. As you know, here in the Principality, we send voice notes via OWL, and they hoot it directly into your ear. My best friend and former voice note OWL mailer, Jessica Owls, is still deceased. So this is my new OWL, Sheila Estites. Say hello to S-E-T, everyone. Anyway, I am just sending this voice note for two reasons. One, to say good luck with delving into the world of Kirk and Luann Van Houten. I hope you do the infamous Dignity Dinner party scene from A Millhouse Divided. So picture this, Luann Van Houten, with all the flair of someone embracing her newfound single status, decides to host a dinner party. It's a gathering of Springfield's finest oddballs, such as Old Jewish Man and Laura Powers. As you boys will probably remember, Kirk Van Houten bursts in like a pasta casserole wielding tornado. Kirk, determined to dazzle the crowd and prove he's still got it, proudly dis presents his culinary masterpiece, a fusion of pasta primavera and ambrosia salad. Now, normally, pasta with salad are like... Now, normally, pasta and salad are like distant cousins at best. But Kirk's confidence is unwavering. With a dramatic flourish, he serves this culinary abomination, expecting applause, but receives looks of utter disbelief. Instead, guests exchange glances as they poke at his unholy dish, attempting to decipher if it's a joke or a cry for help. Luann tries to maintain her composure, while her party spirals into a chaotic blend of awkwardness and disgust. The dignity Kirk intended to showcase slides off his plate faster than you can say Ambrosia Disaster. And the second reason is because I sense you talked for an hour about Kirk and Luann, forgetting to record it. So you had to try and blast through the last 25 minutes or so a second time. Listeners, see if you can figure out where. Anyway, use this nonsense to pad it out. Me and the folk mice and Vonnegut are going for a diamond dust facial and golden fused body wrap. This spa is lit. And no, to answer your question from earlier, you cannot borrow a feeling. Umbleis out. The moments like this moment's supposed to be Kirk and Luan's age, like the same age as Homer and, and all them. Drinking's ruined his life. He's thirty-one years old. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Kirk and Luan sometimes. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone. 
Please record your message. Incoming message from the Balloon Manticores, delivered by their messenger owl, Corporal Flynn Flon Moonbeam, or Gerald, for short. As the celebrations die down, H. Robo approaches Natalie Balloon Roboticore with a look of concern on his face. Are you okay, he says. Natalie looks down at her metallic body and sighs. H. Robo's face falls as he realizes the error of his ways. As H. Robo and his team work to correct their mistake, Natalie sits off to the side feeling lost and alone. She'd always dreamed of becoming a powerful and respected being, but now she was nothing more than a mistake, a mishap in the grand scheme of things. But as the days pass, Natalie begins to discover her true purpose. She may not remember her past, but she has the opportunity to create a new future for herself. With the help of her friends and her own determination, she sets out to become the best version of herself, a being that can be proud to call herself Natalie Balloon Roboticore. And so off they floated through space to seek a violent and hate-filled revenge. The end, or the end. We forgot to record for an entire hour, so we rushed and didn't do a proper ending. So I thought a voice note from Parnes, who has taken all the mice to a day spa. The end. The end. Well, thanks for joining us. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. Hello friends, it's me, Beef Skellington. Just to let you know, I've gone to Magaluf with the philosophers. You know the saying, what happens in the pub stays in lunch. Hope this helped you fill the time needed. Okay, bye.